financially speaking. So this is the stuff that they, uh, and they're not very happy with us, by the way, too. And for a lot of different reasons, Syria, yeah, that's one of them. North Korea, that's another one. And Ukraine is definitely one that they're not very happy about because the United States has big plans for Ukraine, did you know? The Trump administration is attending, what are they going to sell, 210 Javelin anti-tank missiles and 37 launch units to the Ukrainian government. Where do I get this stuff? The Washington Post. The missiles could end up being used in combat against Russian-backed separatists, according to the newspaper. Uh, The State Department has officially notified Congress of the tentative $47 million deal. This uh, proposed sale will contribute to the foreign policy and national security of the United States by improving the security of Ukraine, said in a statement by the State Department's Defense Security Corporation Agency. So it's not just the Washington Post sounding off. The State Department, obviously, it's been validated. This is true. The Javelin system will help Ukraine build its long-term defense capacity to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity in order to meet its national defense requirements. ABC News also reported that the sales signals a significant increase in U.S. military support for Ukraine. Military officials tell the network news the sale is intended to bolster Ukraine's military force in the fight against separatists. And the Trump administration officials claim the sale is proof the White House is tougher on Russia than President Barack Obama was, according to ABC News. So, interesting. And this is getting into the crawl of Vladimir because, of course, he just wants Ukraine just to take it lying down. And they're not. And we're supporting them. And we've been supporting them with all sorts of things, natural gas for one. And we have such a plentiful supply over there. The Ukrainians just love us. They're able to stay warm and fuel their homes and all the stuff they do with national uh, natural gas. So it's a good thing. But this is not, we have similar technology, folks. You know, that makes people nervous. Makes people scared when they see it, and that's the idea. They know that's going to upset people. It's going to frustrate people. And, you know, since 1972, we were supposed to curb, you know, our our nukes and after the Cold War, yada, yada, yada. Trump has said that we need to modernize our systems, and the reason being, it's common sense, they're aging. They're getting old. Uh, Air Force One, by the way, uh, Air Force Two, uh, they're 30 years old. So this past week, Donald Trump finalized the deal that he negotiated with Boeing for billions of dollars. These things are not cheap. But when things get old, they need to be retooled, reworked or scrapped and for something new and more modern that that it's more efficient and uh, more, you know, uh, faster or whatever it is that they can do undetected, whatever technology you're going to get better and better, and better. The Russians are pretty good at rockets. They're pretty good at building nukes. They've been doing this stuff for a long time and we've been doing it too. We'd like to think we do things better, but they have the same, you know, technology. We'd like to think we have better technology. Some people tell me we do. Um, but it's wanting up. Is it an arms race? Russia's got to do something. He wants to get reelected. He wants to get people behind him to feel good about it. And I just say, folks, anybody listening, they're not going to be launching anything to McDill Air Force Base anytime soon. It will not help them. And certainly, uh, (laughs) you know, I mean, it's just a win-lose situation. Now, I am concerned about the Russian relationship, yes, and with you, you with you, Ukraine, that would be one of them, but more so with North Korea, more so with the Iranians. That's 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 just a big deal here. 
And many of the military experts, as far as North Korea go, they are so close from what military experts in the Pentagon are saying, so close from being able to achieve a nuke on a war. This could be any week. And these problems that we have with North Korea are something that keeps me up at night because I do believe there's going to be a showdown sooner rather than later. I do not think that this is going to be ending diplomatically in a peaceful way. I do not. I believe that there's going to be some fireworks going off real soon because these people are hell-bent, regardless of what Washington says or what the United Nations says, they don't care. What do I think is going to happen? Well, my guess is good as any, but what we've been talking about for some time now, and that is we're going to end up shooting something down, and that's going to be a provocation. They're going to feel threatened on that and anything, and we've said it already. Trump has said it already. Anything that you shoot at any of our allies, South Korea, Guam, the States, anything will be shot down. And we got batteries installed and ready to go. And I think they're going to test them. And that's going to plunge us into a war. Now, whatever smart technology that we have that the Pentagon would not release, the Russians don't even know we have, top secret stuff at Area 51, we're talking. I don't care if they've gotten them from the, 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 the Martians up, up in space somewhere, but really good stuff that there's particular nukes that don't uh, have the fallout that a regular nuke has, those kind of things, that you can strategically um, set these things off in such a way where it actually takes down, uh, takes out their, their military fields, their airstrips, uh, hits the central parts of government that they know, and they have this stuff mapped, ma- mapped out to a T. They know all those vari- variations with intelligence. They know what to do. And I believe that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. I do feel bad for the people in Japan and South Korea right there in the immediate vicinity because what they have heard Incoming, incoming, and then how about that snafu in Hawaii where they believed that something was coming in and it was inevitable that something was going to strike and who knows what the hell was on that other end. Was it a nuke? That's pretty terrifying. You'd be kissing your loved ones goodbye, kissing your behind behind. Yeah, you'd be saying the Lord's Prayer. Even if you don't do, do the rosary, you'd be doing the rosary. That's freaky stuff, but it brings back memories for people that went to school back in the 1960s. And you can talk uh, to people that have, and some of our audience, my mother, she remembers. My dad, if he was alive, he'd tell you. But when they were kids, that was what they did in high school. They were under their desks. I mean, that, that's that got to be a little freaky. Um, hopefully, we we don't start reliving some of this this particular stuff. But Unfortunately, we have madmen uh, that have ambitions, and uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, are not going to just let their ambitions go away without a challenge. And I just, and here's the, 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 the worst thing that really goes on, and bad things happen all over the planet, just like bad things happen right here in the United States every day that a lot of people don't talk about. But North Korea has the worst atrocities, uh, human rights records on the. I mean, this is a place t- to me, folks, needs to be taken out. The government needs to be shut down. There needs to be a unanimous vote uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I wish that they would have a kill switch or, or something where they self destruct button that they know that it's inevitable and just do it themselves so we don't even have to do it for them. I mean, this they thought Saddam Hussein was bad with chemical and biological weapons. Their biological program, folks, you can do some research on this. 
Uh, and what they didn't even find half the stuff they said that they had. Yeah, they gassed the Kurds to the north and things like we're talking really wild stuff. This the kind of stuff that he used on family members. You can just spray it on somebody's face and kill them. Nerve agents. You know, they have they they have millions of gallons of this stuff. That's scary stuff, folks. These are the kind of tyrannical, tyrannical uh, dictators that should not be allowed to do it. And then the poor things that he does to his citizens and the fake news stories, talk about fake news that they propagate to the media, and then the fake news over here, MSNBC, NBC, they were salivating. Lester Holt, these folks, that are over there saying what a great thing is going on there and what a great gesturing to have Kim Jong-un's sister there as if she was royalty of some sort and liking her to Ivanka Trump or Melania Trump. Royalty. That she was something else. Yeah, yeah, we've killed how many people? How many people have been responsible for? Uh, Let me think. Ivanka Trump, Melania Trump, now let me think, how many people have they killed? Oh, zero. But they've been responsible for and 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 think the same way, the same exact way that Kim Jong un does. I am not gonna sit there and give it any credence there. They took a lot of heat for it, by the way, when they were doing this stuff here with the Olympics here, saying, Oh, just what a wonderful country it is, what a wonderful person it is, how nice they are to be there. And she was as cold as ice colder than ever uh what's happening in syria uh what's happening with iran what's happening in china and all these other things working together to enable this guy to be able to build these things and there has to be a total shutdown of ships going in and out of that country they need to be boarded and they need to be patrolled better than they are right now. There's not enough crackdown right now. They're getting what they want because they're building exactly what we said we didn't want them to do. And if we were really serious about it, the world body government, China is 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 hurting us. Russia, believe it or not, is hurting us. They've given them technology. Iran's given them technology. You want to talk about scolding all of them for doing that. And imagine if the guy actually gets away with launching something, getting away with that, then who do we hold responsible for? It's going to be uh, the U.S. that's going to have to make the tough decision like we always do. Like we always do, the tough decisions. But folks, do not allow this guy, Washington, if you're listening, President Trump, if you're, if you're listening, please do not allow this man to be able to launch these items that he has been working feverishly around the clock because he's prepared. Are we ready to do the hard thing? Are we ready to stop him from terrorizing the world? Because we have a major threat in front of us right now, and we need to make a tough decision really soon here because he's so close. And we want to talk about a loose cannon. We want to talk about a loss of life. We need to hit him when he least expects it. And folks, we've done these hard things before in our country's country's history. We've fought wars, Antietam, Bunker Hill, the Alamo, Gettysburg. We could go on and on. We've done the hard things before to protect our sovereignty, protect our way of life. Folks, we're talking extinction, okay? With nuclear bombs, these things are not good. Hiroshima, you remember. You've seen that mushroom cloud. We don't need mushroom clouds. It would be nice that we don't have those, but the technology's there, and he's got it. He's got scientists working, guidance systems that are Chinese, and the Iranians have been helping them, and the Russians have been helping them. Thank you very much. Isn't that nice? Yes, for the right price. People can be bought. But, folks, this is human life. And I hope people really, really, truly come to their senses about these particular things here. Because 
You want to talk about big conversation, big doings? Uh, it is sad and tragic, the bad things that happen here in our country. We're, you know, There's two people that are dead now. 